Hello, everyone. How are you all doing today? I hope that everybody is staying safe and staying healthy with everything that is going on right now in our world. But I wanted to be the first person to wish you today a happy Western Wednesday. My name is Val Horwath. I am the Manager of Recruitment and Outreach here at Western Michigan University for the College of Education and Human Development. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we have you know, a few things to go over about our college, some of my favorite things about our different programs that I wanna make sure to share with you. I also wanna give you the opportunity to have your questions answered as well. So a little bit about me. So I am your recruiter for the College of Education and Human Development. Um, I am a soon to be two time Western alum. I graduated in 2016 with my bachelor's in communication in Spanish, and I am graduating this semester, actually the spring semester, with my master's in higher education and student affairs, which is in the College of Education and Human Development. I'm a second generation Bronco, so both of my parents went to Western, and I have also lived in Kalamazoo for eight years now, ever since I moved onto campus as a freshman. So I'm very familiar with the university as a whole, um, different student life, life in Kalamazoo, things like that. So I'm here to be your resource about all of the programs in our college, as well as any general questions that you might have. Um, feel free to take a screenshot of this slide if you want to keep my contact information. I'll have that again for you at the end as well. Um, and then also up here, I included a link to some of our virtual resources in the college. So I will make sure to go ahead and show you that at the end. But that is a really great page that we have. It has all of the things that you might get if we were doing this visit on campus in person, right? So it has our um, flyers about each program, our different information, um, links to our websites, advising, things like that. So I'll make sure to take you there at the end. But a little bit of the history of our college. If you have visited with us before, you probably know that Western Michigan University was actually founded as a teacher's college back in 1903. And so we are super proud of being part of the history of the university. And so obviously Western has expanded a lot since then, so has our college. So as you might know, we now are the College of Education and Human Development. So I'll talk about our programs in a minute, but we have both teaching and non-teaching majors. We've also expanded on campus. If you have been able to come for one of our tours, if not, I really encourage you to check out the virtual campus tour on our website. But we are primarily in three buildings on campus. So Sangren Hall for kind of the home of our education majors, the Student Recreation Center, which has a lot of our health and wellness programs, and then Corman Hall, which has our family and consumer sciences and design programs. And so to kind of take the place of being able to come and see these spaces. Um, feel free to, you know, again, screenshot this slide with this website. It's also linked from that virtual resources page that I'll show you. But we have different um, photos, videos of our different buildings, our labs. You can see featured right here for Sangren Hall is one of our specialty education classrooms, which has different resources that you might find in your classroom when you go to teach. So when you're taking your methods classes, you get to actually learn using those classroom materials that you'll have one day. In the Student Recreation Center, here's a picture of our exercise physiology lab. So this is used a lot for our exercise science majors when they're doing different testing and learning about the human body and how it functions. And then in Corman Hall, you see right here a picture of our um, sewing apparel lab. So our fashion merchandising and design majors, we have industry standard um, sewing machines for them. And so that those are just three examples of some of the hands-on learning opportunities that you'll have in our college with those specialty lab and classroom environments. So getting into our majors, um, I'm gonna talk about these a little bit. And so thank you all for sharing the majors that you are interested in. So the important thing to know is that if you're thinking about education, we do have art and music education at the university. They are primarily run through the College of Fine Arts just because they are more specialized programs, but they do their method, their methods classes and their internships and things like that with us. And then we also have early childhood and elementary education. These programs are both similar in that they share a K through five core. 
So regardless of which of these programs you pick, you'll get certified K through five, all subjects. And then what you add on to that determines what major you choose. Um, so if you are interested in teaching really little kids, preschool, early start, head start, um, or you know you wanna focus in lower L, the early childhood would be the way to go for that. And then with regular elementary, again, you still get that K-5, but you also build on an endorsement at the middle school level as well. Physical and health education is a unique combined program. And so you get actually certified K-12 in both physical education and in health education. And so Western was actually the first school in the state of Michigan to do that combined program model, which is now what we're seeing school districts and principals want when they're hiring for those areas. Secondary education is actually transitioning to be offered as a master's degree. So I'll talk about secondary ed specifically more in just a second, but the way that it is run is that you do a content area major through our College of Arts and Sciences. So I'll show you those in just a minute. Special education is unique in that it offers you certification K-12 in special education for learning disabilities and emotional impairments. And then you also get a dual certification in regular elementary K-5. So because of that, special education is a five-year program by design, but you graduate that with two teaching certificates. And then our workforce education and development programs, if you're somebody who might be interested in you know, teaching, education, being in the classroom, things like that, but maybe none of the traditional subject areas are interesting to you, workforce education and development includes business education, so teaching classes like marketing, accounting, school store, industrial tech ed, which is teaching things like wood shop and drafting metals and AutoCAD, and also our family and consumer sciences teacher education, which teaches classes like personal finance, um, child life, parenting classes, health and wellness, um, all in a secondary setting. So those are some options to te teach some of those unique elective classes that you might have if you're not interested in the traditional subject matter. So really quick before we move on to our human development programs, I did want to touch on the structure of secondary education at Western. So moving forward, secondary education, if you're interested in that middle school and high school and grade levels, these are the different certification areas on your screen right now that we offer at Western. So there's a variety of subjects to choose from. The way that it works is that you actually will get a bachelor's degree in your subject area through the College of Arts and Sciences. You take some undergrad education classes, you get some experience in schools on some clinical rotations to make sure you know, that that's the fit for you and to get that intro to education. And then you complete a one-year master's degree where you are doing your pedagogy and methods classes while being in school, um, in classrooms and internships for the full year. So it's actually the most in-class experience that you can get in any secondary ed program in the state of Michigan. And so this is all in about the same amount of time that it typically takes to do the bachelor's in secondary ed. So we're really excited about this new program model. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. So now moving on to our human development programs. Shout out to our human development programs that are watching today. Um, so I am not going to touch base on all of these in a ton of detail, but I'm in, I'm, I will mention the ones that um, you all told me in the chat that you're interested in. So we do have child and family development, um, family studies and youth and community development. These fall under the same umbrella of our family science programs. So these are all non-teaching programs that focus on working with youth, parents, families in outside of classroom. Setting. So ranging from small children all the way up to adolescents and adults in things like hospital settings, child care, family educators, community organizations, after school programs, and things like that. Exercise science is, um, you saw the photo of the labs for exercise science on the previous slide, that's a broad-based health and wellness program. And so it can be used as um, one of nine different elective track options. So Within exercise science, we have you know, pre-athletic training, pre-med, pre-OT, pre-PT, pre-PA, as well as um, personal fitness, exercise physiology, cardiac rehabilitation, and chiropractic. So there's a lot of different options if you're interested in a healthcare field that you can do with exercise science. 
our fashion merchandising and our fashion design majors are really unique. Um, that's what you see a picture of on this slide. So on the design side, that would be if you're more interested in apparel construction and creating the product lines and the merchandising side is the business side of the fashion world. And so that is where you're doing retail buying, product promotion and things like that. Interior design is a program that focuses on the form and function of interior spaces. So it's not quite architecture and it's not quite interior decorating. It's what happens in between to figure out the layout of the interiors of buildings. And so with the interior design program, I know that we have somebody watching for that here today. The interior design program actually has four different design studios in Corman Hall. And so there's one for each year of the program. And so within the program, they start you out doing, you know, hand sketches, drafting, things like that, learning your angles, learning those forms. And then when you get to the junior and senior design studios, you're primarily working on your computer with the actual design software that you will find out in the industry. So they do a really good job of preparing you and transitioning you to your career. Nutrition and dietetics is all about the you know, chemistry of what's in our food and how that interacts with the biology of our body. So it is very a very science-based major, but that will put you on track to become a registered dietitian. And then recreation management and sport management are kind of under the same umbrella as well. So these both focus on the business sides of the recreation and sport worlds. And so with that sport management, I know we have somebody listening for sport management as well, um, that really focuses on anything business and operations in sport. It can be um, managing teams and players or facilities, sport law, sport media, any of that kind of stuff that goes into it. And then um, workforce education and development. You've heard me talk about that on the previous slide under our education programs. We also have a non-teaching option of that as well that works more with career counseling and things like that at community colleges. So if anybody has any questions about our majors or anything I've shared so far, feel free to let me know. I'll be monitoring the chat and the questions. We do have a few accelerated degree options that I wanted to share with you all as well. So if you are interested in an undergrad program in family studies or youth and community development, then you can do an accelerated master's degree in our family and consumer sciences in either child life or family life education. If you are one of our education majors who's listening with us today, then you can do an accelerated master's degree in teaching English to speakers of other languages, which is called TEFL. And so that is an option that you have if you're interested in teaching English um, as a second language. And then the, our master's in workforce education and development, this is open to any of those workforce undergrad um, education majors. So the business, the industrial tech ed, um, and family and consumer sciences, you can do an accelerated master's in that as well. So really quickly for you teacher education majors, before we get to some of the more general information for our college, a lot of people have questions about what the program looks like. So obviously with the exception of the secondary education program, this is pretty much how all of the education programs at Western will work. And so your first year or two, you're gonna be doing a lot of your content work. And so what we mean by your content area work is you're gonna be taking classes in the subject area that you wanna teach. You'll also be working through any gen ed classes if you have those. Some of our majors like early childhood, elementary and special ed have um, most if not all of your gen eds built into the major as well, which is helpful. And then as you get into those middle years, um, we want you to have that strong foundation in what you're gonna teach before we teach you how to teach it. So in your middle years, then you're gonna start going into those educational methods, pedagogy, theory. We're gonna make sure that we get you in those pre-internships so that you can start building up experience in local classrooms so that you're comfortable. And then to the end of your program, um, whether that's you know four or five years, depending on your program, that is where you will be doing your student teaching internship. So that is where you finished all of your coursework, your full time in a classroom, helping um, with a lead teacher and being responsible for lesson planning and things like that. And that final student teaching internship is typically one full semester 
with the secondary ed program, obviously that's going to be, you're going to get experience that full year. And then with the special education program, you actually do a full year because you have a semester on the special ed side and a semester on that, um, that elementary side as well. So we do have some opportunities for some of our majors to do your student teaching internships abroad as well. So for special ed, you can actually do your full semester abroad in either London or Germany. And then for our elementary and early childhood majors, you can actually do part of your student teaching semester in New Zealand. So there are some fun opportunities for that as well. Okay, so moving on, the rest of what we're gonna talk about is going to be things that apply generally for all of the students in our majors, since we do have so many different majors that fall into our college. But like I said, if you have specific questions about your program, feel free to let me know and I'm happy to answer those as well. So we wanna let you know a little bit about student life in our college, the different things that you will be involved in, the services that you'll use and things like that. So one of the things that I really like to talk about are our academic focused student organizations. So if you have ever come on a tour to Western or been to one of our open house events or anything like that, heard one of our presentations, I'm sure that you've heard us mention that there is something like over 400 student organizations on campus now. There's hundreds, there's student organizations for every possible interest area. And so with that, you know, I encourage you to get involved in something wherever you go to school that is just purely interest-based. But I also encourage you to get involved in something that is academic-based as well. So you can see here we have on, um, well, it's the left side of my screen. It's so hopefully it's the left side of your screen too, um, is our human development programs. And then on the right-hand side are the education-based student organization programs. And so you can see that we have a variety of education ones. We have a human development one for every major that we have as well. And so these are really great opportunities because they will do professional development. You know, they'll sponsor students to go to conferences, bring in guest speakers from the industry who can talk to you about what they're looking for when they hire, things like that. But then they also do fun activities that are social in nature and get you to know students in different years of the program or maybe in you know, a different type of education major from you. And so I really encourage you, shameless plug, wherever you end up going to school, make sure to get involved in something with your major. Okay, a few other things that we want you to know about. So academic advising, um, we have a lot of different ways for you to reach us. Academic advisors, you will have um, one or two advisors that you work with throughout the whole program because we have so many majors in our college that are very different, our advisors all specialize in different programs that we have. And so you'll be working with the same one or two people throughout your time here, so you'll get to know them very well. They are the experts in the requirements for your majors, and they're very accessible. Um, obviously, right now, with everything going on, we're not able to have the drop-in and in-person advising, but they are still reachable by phone, by video chat, by email as well. And when things are running normally, you can just stop into the office for quick questions or you can set up an appointment um, to get an in-depth look at what you need to do for your program. We also have transfer guides for all of the Michigan Community Colleges. So if you are somebody who is one of the people that said you're from Michigan, if you are thinking of you know, doing a year at Community College first and or if you're thinking of doing some summer classes as a way to save money or get, get ahead on some of that credit, um, you know, we, we encourage you to look into those opportunities and we're here to help you plan that out so that you don't lose any time or money when you transfer those classes to Western. So definitely make sure that you're checking out the transfer guides if that's something that you are thinking about at all. For those of you who are from out of state that are watching, we can set that up with for you just on an individual basis um, based on the community college or institution that's in your area. So for housing, those of you who are looking at starting at Western in the fall, hopefully um, you know, you're starting to get to that point where you're looking at housing, sign up if you aren't already. So we have some different options for you if you want to live with students that have similar majors, similar interest area. So we have our education hall, which is in Garneau Hall this year, our human performance hall, so any of those health and wellness majors, 
sport management, exercise science, dietetics, anything like that is in Iker Hall. And those are both in Valley 2. And then for students in our interior design majors, fashion design, you are welcome into the Fine Arts Residence Hall, which is going to be in Ernest Burnham Hall next year. So those are some different options if you want to, again, you know, live on the same floor as students in similar majors. Maybe you might have class together, be able to study together. And then they also have the resident assistant on that floor is a student in one of our majors. And so they'll put on different programming, um, both social and academic for CEHD students. And then one of the things that we really like is our students are very engaged. And so every student in our college, every um, program as part of the requirements for graduation and things like that, have a internship or a field experience that is built into the program. And so obviously for you education students, that is going to be your student teaching experience. Um, those of you on the human development side of our college, that is something where you really get the opportunity to get hands-on skills in your field um, and really get in to see what specific area of your field you want to go into as well and get some experience there. So for sport management, you know, if you decide that you are really interested in sports journalism or sport media, we'll make sure that you get an internship experience that is there. Um, if you are, you know, doing interior design and you know that you want to work with design of commercial office spaces or maybe you want to work with design of healthcare spaces or things like that we can get you connected to firms that have that interest area as well so we can really tailor it and that helps to specialize the program and make it really personal to what you want to do with your career and what you're interested in so because of all that hands-on experience as well as the experience in our different hands-on labs and classroom environments 96 percent of our students have um, post-grad engagement within just three months and what that means is that 96 percent of last year's graduating students were either employed or continuing their education within just three months of graduating so that's something that we are really proud of because it means that we have a really quick turnaround on graduates of the college of education and human development being able to do something and be successful with their degree and so we're hoping that when you join us we'll get to add you to those numbers as well and then one of the final things that we do is um, our education career fair. So the university puts on career fairs each year that are for students of all majors. We have one each spring that is specific for students looking to go into teaching careers. So that typically is you know, held in our student center right on campus. And we have over 100 school districts from around the state, around the country, even some international opportunities as well that are all coming to Western to look to hire our graduates. And so we you know, are really proud of that because that means that our graduates are going out and making a good reputation for us and our program and are being successful as well. So I talked a little bit on the previous side about academic advising. Um, we also have kind of complementary to that our CEHD Student Success Center. So this is something that is unique to our college at Western and they work kind of in tandem with academic advising. So while your academic advisor helps you with, you know, program planning, graduation planning, um, graduate school, career, things like that, they make sure that you are on the right trajectory for that. Your student success coach and the Student Success Center is here for all of the outside academic elements that go into being a successful student. So we know that your life doesn't end when you leave the classroom each day. Your student success coach is there to help you, whether it's feeling homesick, needing some test prep or study skills help, getting connected to different campus resources, getting involved, working with financial aid or professors, any of those different things that go into helping make sure that you are able to be successful as a student. So you will have a personal student success coach who's a professional staff member. Um, you'll meet with them at least once a semester during your first year. And they also do different workshops and different seminar programs and things like that around common topics that you might need to know about your first year as a student, um, as well as all the way through your program. So between them, advisors, professors, we really have a family-like atmosphere here in the college and we'll make sure 
that all of your needs are taken care of and supported. I also encourage you to follow us on social media. Um, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and maybe LinkedIn. So we post a lot of different reminders about some of our info sessions. We'll be posting some different virtual photos of our classrooms and labs. This is also how we share, you know, when our scholarship applications come out each year, as well as just different fun things to stay connected to the college. So go ahead and search for us. We're at WMU CEHD on all of our platforms. So a few words about next steps. So if you are a senior or transfer student who's looking to come to Western this fall, there are some different things for you to do, uh, particularly for those of you who are incoming freshmen. If you are a junior or a sophomore or something like that, you know, kind of just make a mental note of this for when you do get to this point in your application process. So again, this is a page that you can screenshot. I have that website on there for you for the, act, the full next steps checklist through our Office of Admissions. But some of the key things that we want to make sure that you're thinking about right now and doing if you haven't already are submitting that intent to enroll form and your admissions deposit or um, a waiver for that. And that will kind of unlock in your gold gateway is where you'll do all of this. Um, that will unlock orientation registration. So we want to encourage you to sign up for orientation again if you're starting with us this fall. Orientation this summer at Western will be entirely virtual. So you don't have to worry about traveling to campus or anything like that. We will have everything online for you to do. Um, some modules, you'll also get the chance to meet one-on-one -on -one virtually with your academic advisor and they'll help you get registered for your first semester of classes. Also, if you're planning on living on campus, make sure that you are registering for housing. Also, making sure that you, when you get them, are submitting any official test scores, um, AP, IB tests. If you have, you know, retaken any tests that you want us to have, feel free to send those in. Um, and then also your final transcripts. So Western, you know, during all of this, has been accepting some unofficial transcripts for admissions decisions, but eventually we will need your official final high school transcript um, before you register for your spring classes. So there's a few more steps than that, but those are the ones that I wanted to highlight for you tonight. So again, feel free to screenshot this slide and you can go to that checklist and just make sure that you're completing all of those steps to confirm your spot with us and be able to get registered for classes and things like that. Okay, so that is all of the information that I have prepared for you. If anybody has any questions about anything that I talked about, um, go ahead and put that in the chat. Again, feel free to screenshot this if you want, um, this slide. This is my personal email address, and so I check this every day. So if you have any questions or personal situation that you don't want to put in the chat to the whole group, feel free to send me an email. Um, we can also set up a time to talk over the phone or to do a video session like this, but just one-on-one -on -one as well if you have any questions that you want to ask. And so also our virtual resources page. I'm going to give you another second just to screenshot this slide, but I'm again going to go there next and um, just show you the different things that we have set up there that you can look through on your own. So, hopefully, you got that screenshotted if you need it. So now I'm going to go to the virtual resources page so that you can see what that looks like as well. So this is our college virtual resources page for you. So this has, again, everything that you might need that you would get from us if we were able to be in person today. So if you haven't already, um, you can apply to the university. We have that link right here.
offices that I talked about, you know, advising, student access, student services office. We also have um, some of our different brochures that we would give you, you know, at a campus tour or at an open house event or things like that. And then down here, we have all of our different programs. And so you can go to each program, you can view that program website, the flyer for that program, as well as the advising page for that program too. So the advising page will take you, um, and I can just give a quick example, if you want to see the different classes that are inside of your major. So you can go through and look at the program guide, the most recent one for your major. And um, it can kind of look like a scary document, you know, don't, don't worry too much about course codes or anything like that, but you can see um, over here on the side, you can see all of the different names of the courses that are in the major if you want to see the different classes that you'll be taking. Or if you click on the flyer, that will take you to the program flyer for that major that tells you all about it. And then at the very bottom, we have a couple of videos for you. If you were on a tour with us or something like that, we have a welcome video and an introduction to our college too. So feel free to kind of check this page out and to go through it at your own pace. So with that, um, we have a couple of questions here. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer those. What content majors are available for education, for elementary education? So for elementary education, um, sorry, there's a fly. <laughs> um, for elementary education, that, that common K-5 certification that you get with both the early childhood, the special ed, and the elementary education, that is K-5 all subjects. So all subjects in Michigan means language arts, social studies, science, and mathematics. So you get generally certified in all of those subjects so that you can teach them all throughout your day. And then, like I said, with the early childhood, you will be building on that early childhood endorsement, which is birth through age eight. So for the early childhood elementary, it's kind of birth through fifth grade. For the regular elementary major, you're building on the older end of that. And so that is grades six through eight. The way that that works is that you'll pick one of those four areas. So say you wanna teach language arts, so language arts will kind of become, you'll take more classes in that, it'll become your content area focus that you'll get certified in at the middle school level. In addition to that, all subjects K through five. And then obviously with special education, you get certified um, that K-5, all subjects, as well as special education K-12. So I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, let me know. Okay. Um, another question that we got is, when do classes become more based off of the major that you choose and when should you decide by? So um, that's a really good question. The answer is that it depends on what major you're interested in. So some of our majors have a little bit more flexibility than others. Um, in general, let me see if I can see what major you said you were interested in. Elementary education. Um, so in general, if you are thinking at all about an education major, we recommend starting in the education major. Um, the reasoning for that is that with the teaching majors, it is, um, it's definitely easier to switch out of a teaching major than to switch into a teaching major um, and not lose any time or things like that, especially in elementary, early childhood, where most of your gen ed requirements are built into the major. Um, so you might not be taking, you know, a general math lecture, you might be taking number concepts for elementary teachers. And so it fulfills your math requirement, but it's an education specific version of that. So if you were to switch out of education and go into a different major, that still fulfills your math requirement, that math gen ed, but if you just took a regular math class for a different major, as that gen ed, it's not gonna come in and count for the one that you need for elementary ed. So you'd have to take another math class, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, for the education majors, we definitely recommend, even if you're not 100% sure, starting in the education major, just so that you know if you decide, yes, this is for me, you can continue on and not lose any time, or you can switch out into a non-teaching major um, if, if it's not for you. On the human development side, 
those majors tend to be a little bit more flexible. Um, the only ones that are pretty structured like that are interior design and nutrition and dietetics. So both of those programs are ones where, again, if you're thinking about it, you want to start in the program. Um, interior design is a, a four-year program from your first semester in the program. So if you do a year and then start interior design, you still have four more years of interior design. So, um, so for that one and for the dietetics program as well, we want to get you started in those. But um, some of our other programs that are non-teaching are a little bit more flexible if you are not 100% sure on your major yet and decide to switch into it later on. And then I'm going to share my screen one more time just so that you have, again, my email address in case you need to email me anything, if there's something that you don't want to ask to the whole group right now, feel free to go ahead and send me a message. You can screenshot it for later, whether it's, you know, next week or a month from now that you think of something. I know I always think of the best questions, like the next day or something like that. So, so yeah, feel free to get in touch with us that way as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, this will also be available if you missed anything. Um, you know, I know it's dinner time, life's happening right now, um, or at least dinner time if you're in Michigan. Um, so if you had to come in or out or miss any part of this, um, it is being recorded. And so this recording will be put onto our Office of Admissions YouTube page soon. So feel free to check back into that if there's anything that you want to hear again. If you missed taking a screenshot of any of those links, you'll be able to find it there also. Oh, all right. With that, since I don't see any other questions coming through, um, thank you all again. Like I said, if you need anything, we are here. We hope that you are all staying safe and healthy and your families as well. And we are really excited you're interested in Western. We're excited that you're interested in education and human development. We think that it's going to be a great place for you and we would love to have you come and join our CEHD family. So. With that, good night, everybody. Thank you.